Guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, I'm unapologetic about the fact that this bike is filthy. It's my Diverge SDR and it's about to travel with me all the way down to Australia, hence the cowboy hat, to tackle the fastest known time record along the world's longest continuous bike trail. The 1070 km Mundabidi Trail. Now, I haven't cleaned this bike in this video because honestly, it's a bike that's hardly ever cleaned. I've just come off a ripper ride on the trails this morning and figured that showing you a bike designed for the rough stuff, all polished up and clean, would kind of be like me presenting this video to you guys in a dinner suit. It's just not real. This week, I'm gonna give you guys an in-depth run through of my specialized Diverge SDR and what will hopefully be another record-breaking bike. I just need a couple more weeks to confirm that. So starting with the frame, this is a custom painted 56 centimeter Diverge SDR. These frames were built up for the Specialized Team Riding Unbound this year. And I have to say, I love this paint scheme. It's a gloss finish with a series of red, orange, and yellow details, which pay homage to the 1988 Specialized Neutral Support Program. Group set, I'm running a SRAM Red one by with a 48 tooth chambering up front and what is soon to be a 1052 chain ring on the rear. I'm hoping that that arrives in time for my departure because there are some steep pinches out of course and the 1052 that I currently have on the bike just isn't gonna cut it. We will start to get a little quirky. Now the wheel set I'm using is the Reval Terrors, but I've had them rebuilt to include a dynamo up up front. This dynamo generates enough electricity to power my devices while I'm on the go. And as you can see, this cord connects the hub with the front light and the charging station in my top tube bag. I've gone with the shutter precision hub as they're cost effective and based on my previous experience, super reliable. The wiring setup is from K-Lite down in Australia and it's worth noting that this was all equipment purchased by me for the task at hand. You can see in my top tail fin pack that my charge setup fits neatly and allows me to run my cables up to my electrical devices with minimal excess wiring. I do love a clean cockpit. On the topic of electrical, you'll see that I'm running Garmin's 1040 Solar. I'm excited to announce that Garmin have come on board as an official partner moving forward, and so it's great to have them with me as part of this epic journey. Based on my calculations, the Garmin won't actually need to be charged given the solar capacity it has, which is sick. But the iPhone on the other hand will need to be hooked up to power, which is why it's mounted out front too. Now I'm using a really neat phone mounting setup from a Californian based company called Peak Design. This mount is by far the best on the market. It's neat, it's simple to take the phone on and off and it's bulletproof. I now run these on all my bikes and it allows me to access my camera, messaging and music without having to fumble around with finding my phone in the jersey pocket. Handlebars are the specialized flare bar in 44cm width because yes, I'm a bigger unit and believe it or not, bigger units actually need bigger bars. I also suffer from scoliosis so you'll see that my shifters are anything but level. I fit the bike to my body thanks to the retool system not the other way around, because remember, bikes are symmetrical, humans are not. Moving down the bike a bit, I've got a Cyclite bag as my frame bag, and this will be stuffed full of food and small emergency supplies. I like the fact that it's narrow and compact and doesn't obtrude with my knees while pedaling. Tires at the moment are Pathfinder 47s, because bigger is better, but I'll be swapping these out for specialized Tracer 47s when I get down to Australia. The Mundabidi is more like a mountain bike trail and I prefer the feel of the traces on this type of rough terrain. I've also gone with some rim pack tire inserts because I plan to run roughly 25 psi in the tires and don't want to risk bottoming out my tires along the trail. I've been using these for the last couple of weeks now and I'm honestly really impressed with the way that they feel and perform. Pedals at the moment are standard Shimano XTRs but I'll be swapping these out for the new Garmin XC200 power pedals in the next couple of days. We all know how important cupped it is for the smallest of rides, and so when you extrapolate that out to a thousand odd kilometers, it becomes even more important. Hence the fact that I'm running specialized carbon railed Roman mirror saddle in a 155 width. I do have a big booty. Now, a few weeks back when I posted my Andorra video, there were lots of questions about my saddle bag. This is an aero saddle bag from New Zealand based company, Aero. 
Now I've done my fair share of bikepacking over the years and hate a big saddlebag that rocks and sways while I ride. It affects the bike's handling and just feels shite. This bag melts super neatly to the rear stays and remains firmly in place with zero movement, even over the roughest of terrain. It's super lightweight and the dry bag that sits aboard is bright orange, which A, makes sense for bikepacking and B, matches the paint scheme of this bike just beautifully. Now, I think that's all for now. I don't think there's anything I've missed. No, I have missed. The chain is a chain provided by Cyclowax. I've been waxing my chains now for a long time and I'm a big fan and I'll carry some, basically some drip wax loom to apply around the halfway point. If you guys have some questions, hit me down below and let me know what you think. Wish me luck for this next FKT and like always hit that subscribe button and give me a like it just allows me to continue growing this channel and creating more cool content. Cheers. A grade rider, a grade rider on your right, a grade rider on your right. Thank you.